Hi, I'm Adam, and welcome again to Studio Allison, brought to you by Allison Transmission and Propulsion Solutions. This is the place where we will tune in on why and how Allison can make a difference for you. Keeping your critical business, your trucks, buses, crew, goods or passengers moving 24-7, 365 days a year, when downtime is not an option. Today, we'll explore the hot topic of alternative solutions and how to make our trucks and buses cleaner and more quiet. We'll look at natural gas, electrification and hydrogen and talk about why it's so crucial to act now. Later on, we'll talk to Alex Shea, an electrification pioneer and Allison's chief commercial officer for electrification, who will share his fascinating story of his adventurous trip in an electric sports car from Alaska to Argentina. But to start with, joining me here is Sean Foss and Edgar Lips of Allison Transmission. Um, a lot of things are happening uh, to enable us to drive cleaner and consequently more and more electric uh, passenger cars are coming onto the market. So when it comes to trucks and buses, what's hot and happening these days, Sean? And, and what are the main drivers towards cleaner vehicles? Yeah, well, as you see, of course, the passenger cars uh, are already moving quickly to electrification. What you see for the trucks is happening it's also there will be a, a one big driver is the European CO2 emission legislation. Now that legislation basically puts a very ambitious target to reduce CO2 uh, in the European Union by reducing the CO2 by minus 15% by 2025 and then another 15% by 2030. So adding that up is totally 30% reduction of CO2 on all the trucks that are manufactured by the, uh, the truck manufacturers in Europe. So they really force the industry to make the shift and right. uh, drive cleaner. Commitment. It doesn't happen overnight. For Allison Transmission, our commitment to innovation has played out for more than 100 years. It's this innovative spirit that continues to drive us and you into the future. We'll never stop working to meet the needs of a changing industry. Customers can rely on us to support global sustainability goals and the transition to zero emissions with durable, reliable and efficient electric propulsion solutions. We're continually adding forward-thinking industry assets to support the next generation of propulsion solutions, like the Vehicle Electrification and Environmental Test Center featuring repeatable, reliable, seasonally independent and sustainable vehicle testing in one singular location. And our new innovation center, which will help bring new technology and products, including our EV solutions, to market faster and more efficiently. Allison is leading the industry to build a cleaner and more sustainable future, so that our customers are more prepared than ever for tomorrow. Together, we'll improve the way the world works. Well, good stuff. Uh, so there's a lot of legislation driving this, uh, which I guess is forcing uh, manufacturers to make the switch. Yeah, you're right. You would, you would say actually the industry feels forced by the legislation. Mm. But actually what you see happening is that the transformation that will be happening will be really embraced by them. They really are committed to uh, make the change. What you see, there's huge investments in, in, in resources allocated, being allocated. As an example, uh, Traton is investing 1.6 billion into the uh, e-mobility uh, industry mm. and into their programs. So that's a very uh, good example. Yeah. The end of last year, you also saw that uh, the CEOs of all the large truck manufacturers, they signed a pledge in combination with climate researchers to really uh, basically commit that they will be selling all new trucks by 2040 uh, to be fully electric, so full right. electric trucks. Um, well, with a clear sign as well that there's more to be done. They cannot do it on their own. Yeah. And you need to build the infrastructure uh, it to comply. Sounds promising, but uh, 2040, so it won't happen quickly then? 
Yeah, you would say it, it'll take some time before that uh, transition uh, is going to take place. But we also have to realize that the European Union, uh, they have invested, now they're going to invest an extra 750 billion uh, wow. into the industry to make Europe cleaner, smarter and more resilient. Uh -huh. Uh, so that recovery program is the, the greatest stimulus package uh, in history, actually. And that's where really the European Union wants to commit uh, and be the first continent to be fossil free by 2050. Mm. A very ambitious target. Right. Well, thanks, Sean, for talking us through these major drivers and barriers for transforming to cleaner transportation. So, Edgar, I guess the big question is what can uh, fleet managers watching this show right now uh, do to make this happen? And what can Alison add to this journey? Sure. I think uh, it's important to look, uh, when you look at alternative powertrains, uh, that you look at options. What can we buy tomorrow or what can we buy today? Absolutely. Uh, today, uh, the Alison transmission can be easily coupled with gas engines. Uh, the advantage is that uh, the, the gas engines are very uh, volatile uh, engines and the fully automatic of Alison will be compensating on, on, on these kind of things. So also that piece of the power shifting will help in that manner. Okay, that's great. Yeah. But this solution still doesn't have zero emissions, does it? Are there any solutions available uh, right now which have no gas emissions? Yeah, it's the same like with gas engines. Mm. Uh, you can also couple our, our transmissions with, uh, with electrical motors. Uh, one example is in a, a very big project we have with uh, Hyundai, the Hyundai Xent, and that's a full fuel cell electrical uh, truck, which is coupled with our 4500 series, mm. and that's also with the 190 kilowatts uh, hydrogen fuel cell system. Uh, the nice thing is, uh, you can also do this with existing Allison fleets, so the Allison uh, fleets can change the combustion engine with an uh, electrical engine. Right. Well. That sounds very promising, and it's something you can already get now, is it? Yeah, correct. Uh, the the thing is, we also have a project with a, a, a battery-propelled uh, engine, so it's electrical, and that's with a big crane on the back of a truck. And this truck is operated by Flood Logistics and is made by Amos in uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, this this truck. Uh, is equipped with an Allison 4500 series and also have that power shifting, so you also have a very smooth ride, like you ah. can experience with normal electrical cars. Uh, yeah, of course, it's all nice, uh, and the things we can buy today, mm. but in the future, we will start using these kind of products. It's, it's quite something, isn't it? Well, thank you very much, Edgar. So, it's clear manufacturers need to act now and provide cleaner propulsion solutions for their customers. And great that they have options already available today to make that happen. To find out about the latest electric propulsion solutions that are in the pipeline, I had a conversation earlier today with Alex Shea, Allison's Chief Commercial Officer for Electrification. Hi Alex, thank you for taking the time to talk with us. Uh, before we get in, into electrification technology, I really want to hear more about the exciting story of you and a group of friends driving an electric sports car for over 26,000 kilometers from Alaska to Argentina. Back in 2009, uh, a group of mechanical engineering students and I started a project to design and build the world's longest range and arguably sexiest looking electric car. <laughs> which we have with us here today. And bearing in mind, this was in the middle of the financial crisis. Uh, that was quite a challenge to raise the sponsorship that we needed, but we raised about a million dollars worth of sponsorship and designed and built the car. Wow. We flew it out to Alaska and drove it down the 25,000 kilometer Pan American highway in uh, 70 days worth of driving. Uh -huh. And in doing so, we really, communicated the future of this technology and the potential. Uh, and most importantly, we set a benchmark for trying to inspire the next generation to take up STEM subjects uh, that will help the electrification future as well. Incredible. What an amazing story. Exciting stuff. So you can really say you're a, a pioneer breaking electrification barriers. Elon Musk, eat your heart out. So uh, shifting gears to today and tomorrow, what's new in the electrification space right now? 
if you really zoom out and consider what electrification is all about, it's really about being able to mm -hmm. use energy yeah. more efficiently and power vehicles yeah. more efficiently than we've ever done since vehicles were yeah, sure. invented pretty much. And what that ultimately translates to is lower running costs for vehicle operators, but it also means cleaner air and lower noise to improve the quality of life for our city dwellers where large vehicles are disproportionately responsible for emissions and noise in the city environment. The second point is that electric vehicles often outperform their combustion engine counterparts, particularly in areas such as acceleration, allowing vehicles to move faster and complete jobs sooner, thereby reducing costs for the operators. And again, if you zoom out, what electrification really represents is an era-defining shift in technology. Well, it's, it's the way to go, isn't it? Uh, so tell us a bit about how the e-axles work. Allison has a number of electrification programs underway. Of course, we have our eGen Flex electric mm -hmm. hybrid solution, which is focused primarily on transit. But we also have significant investments in e-axles or mm -hmm. electrified axles. And what we have done here is pursued quite a different architecture to many of our competitors. And one of the key differences in that architecture is the ability to locate the axis of our motors parallel to the axis of the axle. That's quite a mouthful. But what it means is a much more tra efficient transfer of energy between motors and wheels, which ultimately improves performance and reduces running costs. Ah. What else can this e-axle technology bring to truck manufacturers? Two things I think that are really important for truck manufacturers as they, as they think about e-axles. Firstly, e-axles help truck manufacturers meet their upcoming emissions legislation requirements. In Europe, for example, we have the European Union imposing strict legislation in 2025 and 2030, helping OEMs to bring down the fleet emissions of the vehicles that they sell. Uh -huh. The second uh, benefit of e-axles is the ability to package them very quickly and efficiently into vehicles while making a lot of additional space for other components that need to be situated. For example, large battery packs or hydrogen fuel cells or hydrogen tanks. So e-axles really help OEMs from a design perspective, but also on the road as well. Saves a lot of hassle. <laughs> so this e-axle technology is very efficient, easy to integrate and assemble. Um, when will the world have access to this technology? Allison is already in the market today with its eGen Flex solution for transit and OEMs and end users are able to purchase that right now. On the e-axle side, we have a whole suite of e-axle products coming to market, ranging from 10-ton axles all the way through 11.5-ton and 13-ton axles to give us broad coverage across the global market of heavy-duty vehicles. Mm -hmm. In terms of stats, these solutions are really aimed to be the most efficient and comprehensive on the market, giving continuous powers well in excess of 400 kilowatts and peak powers in excess of 550 kilowatts for our two motor solutions. And we also have a product roadmap which includes single motor solutions as well for different classes of vehicles. Allison continues to invest in our electrified propulsion program and our strategy remains as it always has been with conventional product to provide the most reliable durable and valuable solutions to our customers worldwide. Well, wow, great. This does sound like a, a solid solution. I'm looking for the catch though. There's always one, right? Uh, what about training and maintenance requirements? There's absolutely no catch in this one, Adam. Uh, you are right to bring up training requirements though. There are differences between electric vehicles and conventionally 
powered vehicles. I'd say one of the largest areas of difference is probably in terms of high voltage training. Mm -hmm. uh, the battery pack typically runs at 650 volts nominal with peaks up to 800 volts. So that introduces some very different requirements for fleets and technicians as they get to grips with electric vehicles. Yeah. But really, as you think about the electric axle and many other parts on the vehicle, there is a lot of commonality between that and conventionally powered vehicles. So it shouldn't take a great deal of time for professionals in this space to train themselves up and become familiar with this new technology. Mm. Well, that's really good to hear. Thank you for your contributions. Thanks for sharing, Alex. All the best to you. That was quite an amazing story. Yeah, it's great to have an electrification pioneer like Alex on board. I can imagine. Yeah. Well, that brings us to the end of today's show, where we've had some great stories and valuable insights. I'd like to thank my guests for their contributions. And thank you for watching Studio Allison, where we explored the hot topic of alternative solutions and how to make our trucks and buses cleaner and quieter. I don't know about you, but I found it electrifying. Have a great day and see you again next time at Studio Allison.